Hello, welcome to the Maya Tool Belt. This is Michael. In this video, I thought I would go over a relatively simple tool, but I find it incredibly useful. I use it all the time. It is the Create Polygon Tool. This can be found under the Modeling Menu Set, under Mesh Tools, and here is Create Polygon right here. So what this does, in a nutshell, let me go ahead and just click it and activate it. You can see the little message popped up in the center there, and my cursor turns into this uh, crosshair uh, icon. At the very bottom of the help line, you can see down there the instructions for how to use the Create Polygon tool. It says, left mouse button to add a new point, or add new points. So what you're going to do is, similar to creating curves, you're going to click to place points for a polygon surface or a polygon object. Now you do need to use an orthographic surface, meaning the front view, side view, top view, or if you're in the perspective view, just know that whenever you are using the Create Polygon tool, you're going to draw it on the grid. Okay, so it's not going to be vertical, it's going to be flat onto the grid when you're drawing it in the perspective view. So let me just show you how this works. If I left click, you can see I place a point. I left click again and it creates an edge between those two ports. Then I click again and you can see the this is the bare minimum required to create a polygon face. It's three clicks, three points that creates a triangle face and a triangle is the bare minimum needed for a polygon face. A tri or a triangle gives you three points, three sides. Keep on clicking if you'd like. This makes a quad shape or a four-sided polygon face. But you, there's no limit though. You can keep on clicking and add more and more faces. Now you don't need to go back to the starting point. Once you are done, simply hit enter and it will fill in that last edge to go back to the starting point. So hit enter and it finalizes the shape. If, uh, because it's, the reason why it's black is simply because it's facing down. You can see when I look at the underside, it's that gray color you come to expect from Maya objects. If you want it to be facing the other way, simply reverse the normals by clicking it to select it and go to Mesh Display Reverse. And that reverses the surface normals, reverses the surface direction so it's pointing up instead of down. And so, using the Create Polygon tool like we have here, we've created this very custom shape that I can then continue to model with to do whatever I want. For example, if I wanted to go to Edit Mesh, Extrude, I could then extrude this custom shape into a 3D, fully three-dimensional object with thickness that I can then continue to manipulate and you know do something unique with it. Um, I find the Create Polygon tool be incredibly useful for uh, if, I, if I want to create something that starting with a cube or a sphere or whatever, a cylinder, doesn't really give me a good starting point, like I really need something custom, I can use the Create Polygon tool to do that. Uh, one example I've given uh, in the past, if I switch to a side view, I can go to Mesh Tools, uh, Create Polygon, and you could, for example, create like the basic shape of a car. Now to get something super high quality, you probably want to spend a little bit more time on it than what I'm showing you here and it's probably not the best use of this tool but I'm just showing you you can do something like this where you have this uh, shape this is again drawing it in the side view so I have this up this uh, vertical uh, starting point and then you can edit to mesh extrude and you have a very basic car shape for example I wouldn't really use it to make a car not not realistically or for a professional project it's a bit too basic for that but you can like this let's just say for just as an example again something that's a bit more practical if I go to mesh tools 
create polygon. And let's just say, you know what, I really need a shape. I'm going to hold down X for snap to grid. I really need a shape that's like this. Hit enter. And I, again, go to mesh display reverse. So I have this shape right away as opposed to creating a cube and then like extruding it and beveling the, an edge or something like that. And then so with this profile shape, I can extrude it, edit mesh, extrude. And then I get this particular shape that I needed for whatever project I'm working on. So it's just a little bit of a uh, shortcut for creating something a little bit more custom shape to it as opposed to using a cube or something. That's the basic uh, use of the Create Polygon tool. So, as we do on the Maya tool belt, let's look at our options for the Create Polygon tool. Let's go to Mesh Tools, Create Polygon, Options. I'm, going to, I'm just going to nest these tool settings in here. I'm going to hit a Reset Tool. So here we are for our settings. So one, one thing while we're talking about uh, creating polygons with the Create Polygon tool, one thing to keep in mind, based on the direction you travel when it comes to the uh, shape you're making. For example, I kind of lean to the right, I suppose. I'm right-handed. I kind of go to the right when I'm creating shapes. I hit enter. And my surfaces uh, are often black because they're always pointing down. And I have to reverse the normals if I wanted to do that. However, if you can get into the habit, like I haven't yet, of going to the left, you can see as I draw this shape going to the left and hit enter. You can see now my surface is pointing up. So drawing to the left, the normal tends to point up. Drawing to the right, the normal tends to point down. So if you want it to point up, which I typically do, I just always forget about, uh, drawing to the left seems to uh, make that happen more often than not. So again, the visions adds points per uh, click. Now one thing I did notice as I was doing that, let's go ahead and increase this up to like three. I'm gonna left click and I'm gonna left click over here. Now as I click and drag, you can see those two points get added to the edge as I'm dragging this second point around. I let go, but you, then you see my point got moved way back here. It didn't actually go where I told it to. Now after you've placed a point, you can middle click and drag to move that point. So I'm left clicking, I let go, and my point got moved way back here. I'm gonna middle click and drag and move it back over here. I can do that, middle click and drag. Hit delete while the tool is active and you can undo the points you've placed. So for whatever reason, I haven't, I haven't quite figured out why exactly, but increasing this divisions number, if I increase this up to three or two or whatever, and left click and then place another point, it truncates the edge I placed. And what seems to happen, let me undo this. If I left click here and then click and drag, that first point, the first highlighted point, you see how it's darker than the other two. If I let go, that seems to be where the end of the edge is placed. You see it placed right here where that point was. And then it divided into three pieces because I have divisions of three. I'm not sure if that's the way it's supposed to be. It seems to me more intuitive that it would go all the way to the end of my where my cursor is being placed because it does show me what I would expect, which is uh, the line going to the end of my cursor with and divided twice, giving me three divisions, which is what I have set here in the options, three divisions. But then when I let go, the line only goes to that first point right here and then divides it into three pieces. So I'm not sure why that's happening, to be honest. Uh, it's not an expected result. In any case, if you increase this divisions up, just expect it, unless yours is working different than mine, which it possibly could be. Maybe mine is malfunctioning in some way. But if I left click and click again, you can see the edge being drawn with a division in the middle. But when I let go, the edge that is drawn stops at that division and then itself gets subdivided in the middle. So I'm not sure why that is, to be honest. It does not seem intuitive to me. But that is what's happening. If I right click on it and choose vertices, you can see the subdivision that happened in the middle like this. 
So it worked in that sense. It did subdivide the edges that were created, but it did not create them in a way that was intuitive to me anyway. So I don't know, keep that in mind. If you use a division of one though, it does pretty much work as expected. Okay, so keep new faces planar. So what this simply means is that with this checked, which it is by default when you reset the tool, keep new faces planar. So what that will do is it will try to keep the faces you make planar, which means flat. You won't have a face that is uneven. And I can best demonstrate this if I show all four views. So with keep new faces planar, in the top view here, I'm just going to click a couple times to start my uh, polygon face. And then over here in the front view, I'm going to click down. So again, you can see in the top view, it looks pretty much straight. But I'm going down. And then in the perspective view, I'm going to click over here. Now you can see how that didn't work. It shot up there into the sky. Let me hit delete to undo that. So in the side view here, I'm going to click over here. And you can see again, that didn't work. It kept it straight. It kept it flat. Hit delete. So no matter what I where I click, it's keeping this face. And again, it, it, when it doesn't understand what I'm trying to do, it errors out like this, but it's trying to keep the face flat. So I hit enter, and then my face is flat up and down like this. So let me delete that. Okay, here we go. This is more like what I was trying to show. So I've clicked a couple times in different viewports. So you can see the top, front, and side over here. So now in my perspective view, you can see the face that is created is definitely not flat. It has this kind of V shape to it. So when I hit enter, the face is not planar. And that is with that keep faces, keep new faces planar option turned off. I typically would suggest keeping it on. All right, then next we have limit the number of points. So if you have a specific number of points you want faces to be, for example, typically you do want to keep your faces quads. You don't want to have n-gons, they call them, or where n equals a number greater than four. Or, uh, you want to have tries, which are three-sided faces, quads, which are four-sided faces, and try to avoid n-gons, which are faces that have more than four sides. So, for example, when you check limit number of points, the default limit is four. Limit points to four. You can, of course, go above this or below this, but you can't go to two. You can see I type in two, hit enter, and it won't let you. Three is the minimum, because you can't have a face that's smaller than three sides, a tri or triangle. So let's go back to four. So now when I click my fourth point, the tool automatically completes and creates the face, and you don't have to hit enter. It knows that this is now a four-sided face, so it's going to stop trying to draw any more and create the face for you. So that's, again, limit the number of points. If you uncheck it, you can, the divisions comes back, you can change the number of divisions you want, or you can, if you check limit number of points, the divisions gets grayed out. So those are the main options for creating the faces. Uh, typically, I would just leave it as the default value, or if you want to, you can limit the number of points to four. I don't really suggest, mainly because it wasn't working on my end very well, increasing the divisions up beyond one. Um, like I said, it just like I just like I demonstrated, it wasn't really working super great. But let's look at the texture space options we have here. And to do that properly, let's look at this side by side view. I'm going to panels and change this to my perspective view and panels and we'll call this one the UV editor like this and let's uh, move this out to the side okay so this is the UV texture editor we have several videos going over lots of tools in here there are still more tools I haven't gone over yet but what this is referring to when it comes to texture space is how the UVs are generated for the faces that we make so first to demonstrate this I'm going to hold on the X for grid snap I'm just going to snap my points to the grid so I can get a uh, this, the same shape each time. So for texture space, let's choose normalize, which is scale to fit. And I'm just going to click in these four points like this to create this triangle shape and hit enter. So you can see here in the UV editor what we get as a result 
with our normalize option. We have this shape here. I'm going to keep this triangle here. I'm going to name it. We'll call this one normalize. And now I'll make another shape and we'll say unitize, which says use corners and boundary. We'll then X for grid snap. Click in these same three grid places, enter. And now here you can see the result in the UV editor with our shape. Move this over to the side. So the two triangles are, this is unitize. The two triangles are identical, but you can see the difference in how the UV space gets created. The UVs are laid out in this different way. With this shape, we get something that's closer to the actual shape of the triangle. And this one, it kind of gets pulled and stretched to fit the entire uh, boundary up here, which kind of fits in with what we have here. Normalize the scale to fit. So it's scaling the triangle here to kind of fit within this boundary. And then unitize says use corners and the boundary. It's going to use all the corners here and kind of stretch this out to fit in that way. And then the last option is none, which you can kind of guess what would happen. But let's just go ahead and do it anyway. We'll hold up X for a grid snap and click in these three points and hit enter. Move our new shape down here. We'll call it none. But you can see in the UV editor, no UVs have been created. It's an empty UV space. So you'd have to create your own UVs for this shape. So this is normalize, unitize, and none when it comes to the texture space options that we have available. Reset. If you reset the tool, the default value is normalize, which is what this one is doing. And that seems to be pretty much a straightforward way of handling it. Uh, I would have to adjust this slightly to get it to look exactly the same since we did create a uh, perfect triangle snapping to these points. So this point is in the middle. So this was off slightly over here. So we would need to fix that a little bit. But overall, that is how the tool works. Again, this is under Mesh Tools, Create Polygon Options. So again, Divisions, Keep Faces Planar, Limit the number of points, and you have options here for adjusting how the texture space is utilized. Hope you enjoyed the video and learned a little bit about how to create your own custom polygon shapes. Like I said, I use this, uh, I use this tool quite often to create shapes and give, give myself a little bit of a uh, shortcut to certain shapes instead of trying to use a, a cube or a sphere or something like that. Thanks again for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please feel free to like and subscribe and comment. I'll be uh, reading all the comments. And thanks again for watching. And I'll talk to you later.